Hello and welcome back to Chienye. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Probably not. Um, I believe the last part that we saw was Cat Dude and Otto. I'm trying to remember their names. Um, we're at Otto's family's house. They were having dinner. Which is apparently something that they haven't done in a while, but like the parents were ecstatic to see Cat Dude. I'm trying to remember his name. Um And everything was going fine, and it, it kinda seems like Otto has a thing for Cat. Um The cat himself is wrestling with some stuff right now. As having to do with what happened, not really knowing um what happened with Miss... Oh, I'm blanking on her name already. Um, but the lady that he helped, that he found in the uh, forest, woods, and the disappearance of that lady's son, who also was sort of stalking him, um, which we find out earlier in the previous um, update, in which um, Cat Dude's boss, whose name I also forget, I think it's, it starts with an M, I think, I forget, um... He was investigating what was going on because he didn't want him to be involved anymore. And he discovered that he was, that his, that cat dude was being, um, stalked. That there was pictures of him that were repeating what, um, what Camille, Cam yeah, Camille, uh, what he was saying to cat dude. He's saying like, oh, do you see them? Um, they see you, et cetera, et cetera, like that. Um... Uh, there was some interesting, kind of spooky stuff that was happening, but we haven't seen anything outright uh, supernatural happening, aside from, like, the technically bad ending at the beginning of the visual novel. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming, if I recall correctly, this is the update where we go to the, uh, the village that, um, that is where the tiger's brother disappeared. Um, and it's gonna involve him taking the tiger, uh, to investigate that, so, yeah. So, without further ado, let us continue Xien. No, that the... I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that. I must say... I've really missed this. He sits by the bed, pulling his trousers up, and then putting on his shirt. Hmm. Didn't feel any different than last time. Gosh, Tom, you wound me. Jacob smirks while he finishes unbuckling his belt and stands up to approach me. I'm always open to new ideas, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want. His hand wanders onto my cheek. I push it away before he has a chance to take it further. Sorry, it's not like I'm not interested or anything. Just tired. His head tilts slightly as he takes a step back. Hey, it's alright. We've been at it for over a few hours. He looks at his watch and then looks back at me with a sly smile. Anyway... There's something that I've been meaning to ask you. Oh, of course. Let me get my wallet. I sigh, feeling dirty. But then again, I know that it'll eventually go away. It always does. And this time, I need to help someone I care about. So it's worth it. Before you do that, there's this friend of mine who might require a lawyer. The fox regards me with a curious look. This is the first time that I've told him anything about my personal life. Got a friend in trouble with the law. He, um, borrowed money from some thugs. Loan sharks. They came to a sister shop where I work. They questioned me about his whereabouts. Did they hurt you? He gently touches my hand before his fingertips creep up my shoulder. I decide to bear with it, 
If I start acting uninterested, he might refuse to help. No, they didn't. He squeezes my shoulder with a sigh of relief. I'm glad. Has he called the cops? No. I see. I really think he should. Might be hard to convince him. Well, I can discuss a few things with your friend. I haven't told him that I'm seeking your help yet. I see. Just let me know if he wants to. I guess I owe him one now. I just hope that he won't want me to stay here longer. I don't mind doing it pro bono. What? You don't sound so surprised, Tom. I... Um... Uh, I don't know. I, I expected... You already said that you were feeling tired, didn't you? I don't want to force you into something that you don't want. Hmm. I don't know how to feel about this right now. I expected him to agree to help, but not without something in return. I guess even I have a pleasant surprise from time to time. Instead, you could tell me a bit about your friend. Like how he got himself into this situation. Maybe it's alright to share this with Jacob? He already is willing to help. I don't think Otto would mind. Um, well, Otto is a childhood friend of mine. His family runs a lumber mill in the town. He's a nice guy. I'd hate to see him or anyone close to him get hurt over this. I understand. It's very kind of you to look out for your friends. And I rarely get to experience that softer side of you. I'm just going to ignore his comment and move on quickly. Anyway, um, Jacob made some promises to his family and his workers, then realized that he couldn't keep them without outside assistance. But because his business was in the red, the bank refused his loan. So that's why he turned to a loan shark? I nod. Ah, that's how those stories usually go. Feeling like you have no choice can lead to some regrettable outcomes. But let's see. Did he sign any agreement with them? I have no idea. All I know is that he told them that his sister's shop was his, and that's why they came there. Perhaps he mentioned the name of a person that he's been borrowing money from? How did he find them? Nothing like that, but I can text you once I've asked him about it. The more I know, the better. Sure. Hopefully Otto will agree. Jacob can definitely assist him with legal matters. But then again, he might be reluctant in case his parents and co-workers found out. And just repay the wolf. On that note, it seems that my stay in... Sipnevo? Sipnevo? It's gonna become a lot more entertaining than I thought, eh? He flashes a sly smirk at me, his eyes gleaming with mischief. What do you mean? Well, I'll be staying here for a few days on business. I guess I can mix business with pleasure. He stares at me with hunger in his eyes, his gaze lingering on every part of my body. What kind of business? Oh, interested in my work now. Just curious. As he leans closer to my face, I instinctively turn my head away. Isn't being here for you a good enough reason? I doubt that you come all this way just for me. You always make it worth it, though. Jacob whispers his words very slowly, in an obvious attempt to be seductive. I wish that I could just tell him that it doesn't really work on me. So? He leans away again. Fine, fine. I'm handling a land dispute. I was hired to assist the buyer in acquiring ownership of a local area. Oh, I see. Where exactly? Classified, my dear Tom. Maybe Jacob knows this is exactly the kind of thing to say to get me curious. So, your client prefers to remain anonymous? Perhaps. His tone is coy, but it might be best to cut this short. I've got what I came for. Otto will receive a little help from Jacob. If he accepts it. Alright, well... Is there something else? I take a deep breath, my head hanging low as Jacob looms over me once more. 
I need to tell him that I don't want to keep doing this. But what if he then changes his mind about helping Otto? He wouldn't do that, right? I close and open my eyes slowly, staring at the eager fox in front of me. It's... nothing. With a smile never quite slipping off of his muzzle, the fox nods. If you say so. I take my jacket from the bedside table and head towards the door. Leaving so soon... Yeah, I've got work in the morning. I see. Keep in touch, okay? I'll try. That doesn't sound too convincing. What do you want me to say? He smirks and lifts my hand with his, squeezing it. An awkward silence hangs between us before he actually says anything. Well, how about we end it with a kiss? Jacob's expression shifts as his hungry gaze focuses on me. I don't think... Are you not enjoying what we have? I'm way too tired right now. Sorry, Jacob. In that case, you can stay the rest of the night here if you want. He's becoming more and more persistent. I don't think that's a good idea. This feels relentless. His cheeky expression turns into a smile. At last, he leans in for a hug. As he does, I feel his hands sliding something into the back pocket of my trousers. I'm all sore, so you deserve this. I... He opens a door for me. Take care, Tom. Yep. You too, Jacob. Thanks. Jacob locks the door behind me as I walk off from the motel into the night. No buses are running at this hour. That's fine, I guess. A brisk walk should help me shake off some of the wariness. I start counting the paper bills inside the envelope as I walk. A thousand... I forgot how you pronounce that word. Ugh. At least I'm not that cheap of a whore, right? Hmm. Well... It definitely won't solve Otto's problem instantly, though it should cover at least something. I'm having second thoughts about all of this. What if Otto started asking questions about Jacob? Jacob wouldn't tell him, right? I mean, he's trying to cover his ass, too. Have I even thought this through? Like, it doesn't even matter as long as Otto gets help. And if he did find out, then maybe he'll realize that I'm not worth his feelings. To distract myself from those thoughts, I check my phone. Several missed calls from Dad. Whatever. My work starts early in the morning, and then I gotta meet up with Marcus. I'd be lucky if I can catch just a few hours of sleep. I sit by a table outside as the waitress approaches to take my order. After she's gone, I pull out a cigarette, scanning the scene as I light it. The place seems unusually lively today. Tom should be arriving soon. It's strange that he didn't want me to pick him up today. He only said that he didn't want to be babysat. While this place is nice, it's pretty far from the town center. Meeting here with everyone will definitely be quicker, though. My ears perk up over the sound of rushing footsteps. Shortly after, I spot Tom jogging over towards me. Uh, hey Marcus, sorry I'm late. You're right on time, actually. Tom pulls up a chair opposite of me and slumps into it. Have you at least ordered for us? I've been craving hot cocoa for a few days now, ever since you first mentioned it. Hmm, <clears throat> I have. Don't worry. I should arrive soon. Tom's fur may be black, but I can still notice the sunken dark circles around his eyes. You alright? You look tired. Uh, that'd be an understatement. I haven't been sleeping well recently, but it's fine. Nothing to worry about. It doesn't look fine at all. Have you been having headaches again? Oh, actually, not at all. You didn't stop taking your meds, did you? No, the headaches didn't hit me yesterday nor today for that matter. I'm glad then. Though, I guess I have no idea how it works. Maybe you just ate something. I doubt that. Either way, it's fine now. Anything new with the investigation? I've sent the blood sample 
from the abandoned house to a friend of mine. Hopefully they can tell us something. What about the other houses? Uh, was the chief happy with your findings? Well, she... Here's your order. One hot cocoa and one double shot espresso. Enjoy. She gently places our drinks on the table and leaves after a courteous nod. Tom starts to sip at his drink immediately. She was content, I suppose. Still dead set on the fact that Camille was the attacker. It could be him. We don't really know. Yes, but what I'm saying is that they haven't considered any other possibilities. I mean, they rarely do. You're right. I'm still waiting for the information about the tenants from the other houses. You didn't tell me much about that. Want to share? I suppose, although there isn't much. At least until Igor is able to fill in the gaps. I see. The married couple gave me the most to ponder about. They acted strange. The husband definitely looked like he knew something when I mentioned Camille. Why does it feel like everyone knows more than we do? Well, on the bright side, we still know more than the police. What? They don't know about the photos of you that I found at the house. Tom rubs his temple and starts tapping his fingers against the table. <sighs> don't remind me. It's fucking creepy. I don't understand why he'd be doing that. He looks around, as if expecting someone to be watching him. Don't worry. I'll find out why. I want you to focus on something else. Tom glances at me with a slight suspicion before nodding. Right. You did mention you got something for me. Which one of your clients am I helping with? He should be here shortly. But to avoid surprising you, it's Raymond. Raymond? Wait, uh, the tiger from the bar? I knew he looked familiar. He was in your office at some point, wasn't he? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I wasn't sure what to exactly tell you. That was the last case your mom was involved in before. I thought you wouldn't. You thought what? I thought you wouldn't want to discuss it. Especially that... It's been so long. I lie, because I know. I failed his mother, as I failed him. Dad never told me anything about what actually happened. Most of what I'd gather was just scraps from you. The truth is, if I were given the chance to not tell him anything, I'd probably do it. With the police fucking up and everything, there wasn't much left to go on. It's hard to admit it, but I deserve his anger. You told me that she was investigating some missing persons case, that there had been a few while I was away. I wanted to shelter him from this despite that it was never my choice to make. Yet you knew this specific case was her last, and you said nothing? But knowing how reckless he can be, maybe I should have. It's been a while. Simply put, I just wanted to protect you, Tom. Fuck off with that. I already told you. I don't need a babysitter. Why is everyone treating me like a child that needs to be guarded? It's fucking too late for that. Tom, nobody wants to see you get hurt. This isn't fair for me too, you know. Give me a break. I'm already fucking hurting. And you all keep piling it on. Who are you referring to? Tom looks away. Tom? Tom sips his drink, his eyes never quite meeting mine. I would have thought that he wasn't paying attention if I didn't know him better. Well, Raymond wants to talk to the witness who saw the missing students leaving town. He thinks someone must have been lying. I'd rather not have him wander around alone accusing people like that. So you thought having a local asking about it would be a better idea? Exactly. I can do that, but not because you asked me. I'm only doing it for Raymond. That's fair. Give me more to go on. Names. Species. Actually, just write everything that you think is important. Unless you want to keep it all a secret. I don't. Sure, I'll write it down. 
shocking. I've got a hunch that he's already plotting something in his mind. I tear an empty page off my notebook and start scribbling with my pen. Once it's all written out, I hand it to him. Sweet, thanks. Just don't get in trouble. And be respectful. Well, it's out of your hands now, isn't it? I raise an eyebrow at him, smiling slightly. Suppose it is. Yeah. So, what will you be up to while we deal with these witnesses? I'll go to the... Gruberny Edgeford and talk with the owner about the food packaging. Can you just ask Raymond? I could, but it's been a while since Bernard and I had our good old shinwag. Okay then, do whatever old folks do. I suppose Tom's reaction was a lot tamer than I expected. As long as he doesn't do anything stupid, it's all fine, though I'll have to sit down and talk to him properly. He's here. I look to the side, seeing Raymond as he walks up to us. Sorry, uh, you had to wait so long for me already. Didn't you say that you were on the way an hour ago? Yeah, sorry. I meant I just woke up. Mm, thought so. Raymond lets out a nervous laugh. Well, at least one of us is getting enough sleep. Oh, uh, hi. Hey. I think that I should introduce myself properly. Your name was Raymond, wasn't it? Yes. Well, we did introduce ourselves back at the bar before. Still... Tom lifts himself from the chair and extends his hand to Raymond. Properly then, I am Tomak, but you can call me Tom. Yes, Tom, I remember. My name is Raymond. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Raymond. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the agenda. Right. I told Tom about the witnesses, and I want you to follow his lead. Raymond nods and listens attentively while Tom casually drinks his beverage. People might not be as open about it as you might think. It might not be easy to get them talking. Be nice. Sure. Can. Splendid. I'm glad that we understand each other. Raymond, do you know if Bernard will be working at the bar today? I took a day off to come here, so I think that he will be there the whole day. All right, neat. Why do you ask? Gotta talk to him about another case. Oh. Anything else that we should know? You already know everything that you need to talk to the witnesses. Just stay out of trouble. I'm sure Raymond can tell you what questions would be worth asking for his peace of mind. Fine. Finishing his drink, Tom stands up and grabs his bag, slinging it over his shoulder. Raymond then follows suit. We'll be on our way then. Alright, good luck. Yeah. Have a good day, Marcus. The two of them begin to walk as I light my cigarette, the sun casting long shadows behind them. So Raymond, have you ever broken into any houses before? No, ah. Where got? I could teach you. Well, Lao? Really? Tom says something else. I can't make out, and they both share a hearty laugh as their figures grow smaller with the distance. They should be fine. Let's see what Bernard has to say. Bernard's bar is a lot calmer during the day, though it still has a few patrons. A sheep waitress, who probably is standing in for Raymond, is busy attending to a female customer. As I enter the brightened, afternoon sun behind me casts a long shadow towards the two women. They both turn towards me. I wasn't planning on making a dramatic entrance, but... Welcome to Gubernate Edgeford. Please have a seat. I'll take your order shortly. I choose to sit at the table next to the bar window. After a few moments, the waitress approaches with a wooden pencil, poised inside the cusp of her tight right hand. Would you like to order? Excuse me, is Bernard around? Our boss should be here soon. Is it urgent? I can give him a call. No, it's fine. I can wait. I see. So, your order? I quickly look through the menu and order the first thing that catches my eye. Something simple. 
kielbasa with fries should be good. Of course. And your drink? Mmm, just green tea with lemon. She scribbles everything down and heads off. I scan the surroundings for a no smoking sign before pulling out a cigarette and lighting it. I have no idea how Bernard will react to me showing up here. As I smoke, I keep glancing around to make sure that I don't miss him entering. As I finish my second cigarette, the waitress comes back with my order. Here you go, sir. After putting everything down on the table, she turns around to leave. Um, could I ask you for something? Of course. Do you recognize this man? I place Camille's picture on the table. She bends down a little and squints her eyes. Her gaze is fixated on the photo, but for several moments, she says nothing. I'm looking for him. He's been missing for the past few days. Yet as I observe her more closely, her pupils begin to dilate and her jaw tenses up, thick veins running down her neck clearly visible. Um, miss? I, I, um... Are you alright? She mutters something under her shaky breath. He... Hey, it's alright. I'm sorry. Um, the, the police asked about him. I really don't know that much. I understand. You just seem very nervous. I'm sorry if I caused this. I'm trying to just do the right thing. I see. I... I really need to go back to work. Before you go, does Gubern Edgeberg offer food delivery? No, we don't. Were you working the night the attack in the woods happened? Yes, the po police already asked about that. The girl seems to be on the verge of breaking down, and maybe pushing it too much. I see. No worries. I'm really sorry to bother you. Harassing my staff, old dog. Daria, there are fresh orders lining up. The voice echoes from the entrance like rolling thunder, a familiar voice. The waitress turns around without a word and heads off behind the bar. I see one of her co-workers glaring back at me. No, I wasn't. Marcus, you've already been grilled by the cops pretty harshly yesterday. The huge polar bear steps up in front of me, his belly protruding so much that it hits the side of the table. I stand up to greet him, but Bernard pushes me down by the shoulders, back to my seat. No need to stand up. Let's chat. He slides into the seat opposite of me, and his eyes meet mine with a cold yet familiar stare. The old bear takes off his glasses, placing them on the table. Good to see you again. Wish I could say the same. You're rarely around on good business. You're not wrong, Bernard. There's something that I need to ask you. Straight to it, eh? I was hoping that you'd change just a bit. Were you? A shame, really. But I get it. Hard to teach an old dog new tricks, eh? Do you want some beer? No, not really. I'm driving. Bah, don't be boring, Marcus. I won't be here long. Just a few questions. Fine, I'll humor you, for old time's sake. He smirks, but his expression turns more serious when I point to the photo of Camille still on the table. Seen this guy? Only from the police pictures of him. They interrogated us about him after the attack that happened nearby. Really spooked my workers, you know. Same way you did just now. Bernard tilts his head from the left to the right, stretching his neck until an audible crack is heard. His mother hired me to find him before she got attacked. Ah, poor woman. Indeed. That's why I hope that you can help me here, Bernard. Sure, pup. What do you want to know? Pup? I'm just going to pretend that I didn't hear that. There were some food packages found in one of the abandoned houses related to the investigation. And they were from Gubernie Edgeford. So tell me. Food delivery? Oh, nah. Too expensive to hire a delivery service these days. I see. But if you say an abandoned house, once a month we cook a bit more and distribute the extra food to the local shelter. 
Besides, I prefer face-to-face -face interactions with my customers. I see. He smirks, looking around, admiring the decor around his bar. How easy is it to get that food packaging? We give them out when they order takeout, or when they want to take the rest of their meal home. The customers tend to order too much, you know how it goes. So it's not that hard, I reckon. But usually you'd have to come here. Or work here. Hmm, I don't like what you're insinuating, Marcus. If my nose was correct, the leftovers found there may be one or two days old. Who was on shift that day? Hard to say. The workers tend to cover each other's shifts without telling me first sometimes. He chuckles after that statement. I simply nod and write everything down. I'll ask my workers. That'll be helpful. Can you write me the address of the shelter, just in case? Sure thing. I check my notes, finalizing everything that I've gathered so far. I think that's all. Sorry to bother your fine establishment. Nah, you're always welcome. We should crack a cold one together again at some point, pup. Maybe when my hands aren't so full. Hmm, well, when will that be? Who knows at this point? Then I hope I can catch you on a break in your case, for your own sake. I hope so too. The bear stands up putting his glasses back on while he talks to the waitress before going to the back. I finished my meal quickly, no point staying here any longer. I stand up and walk to the waitress, Daria, who stands behind the till. How much was everything? Our boss said that it was on the house. I see. Thanks for the lovely meal then, and I'm sorry if I startled you with my questions. I was just doing my job. I understand. I was just shocked after the cops came to us and interrogated me as if I were the suspect. I'm just here to help a mother find her lost son. Okay. Here's my card. Just call me if you remember anything or are ready to talk. I'll keep that in mind. Have a pleasant shift, Daria. I wonder what kind of questions the cops asked her that elicited such a panicked reaction. Or perhaps it was actually something else about Camille that triggered it. Although Miss Novak did say that her son didn't have many friends, nor people he spent time with. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. The waitress could have simply been terrified. Nothing more to it. The rabbit couple and the shelter are the leads to follow closer. I'll mull over that later. Gotta get back to the HQ to check up on Igor and follow up with the hospital for an update on Miss Novak. Maybe Tom and Raymond are having a bit more luck on their end. Given how close the first witness works from the cafe, I didn't have much time for a proper conversation with Raymond before we got to our destination. I'll have to get to the details later. For now, Raymond has briefed me on the basics of his case, which is enough to ask some questions. The tiger follows behind as we enter the shop, but there's nobody behind the till. No CCTV, just a convex mirror popped up in one of the corners of the ceiling. I wonder if there's a camera in the area around the shop. Maybe we should call out to the owner? Raymond speaks in a hushed voice. I nod. Hello? Is anyone here? Coming! Raymond and I exchange a look before approaching the counter. An old bison slowly comes out of the back, wearing a Forrester's uniform, a cap, and a pair of glasses. He throws us a wide, warm smile, showing a few missing teeth. How can I help you, boys? Raymond looks at me, hesitant. I reciprocate the man's welcoming gesture with a smile. Uh, sorry to bother you, sir, but we're passing through town on our camping trip. Oh, that's great. Looking for camp supplies? Tents? Cords? Fire starters? Where are you planning to camp, by the way? Uh, we weren't sure yet. Somewhere nearby, maybe. Although my friend here is kind of scared. This big tiger? Scared. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, well, I heard that there have been some missing people in the forest nearby. The old man gives us a hard stare. Hmm, I guess you're not from around here. There's not much to it. You ask me, it's probably people just running away from their own lives. Either way, 
It's been a while since any of that. Our woods are safe now. Save my ass. Either he doesn't know about Miss Novak's attack, or he just really wants to sell us something. While omitting the gory details, I turn to Raymond and give him a discreet wink. We haven't discussed any signals, but I hope he knows to play along. I, um... Um... Are you certain? We did some research before coming. Yeah, the only major disappearance happened a while ago. How long? Um, maybe a year or two? Some kids went missing. It's hard to remember all those runaways. Runaways? The bison raises an eyebrow, to which I return a cocky smile. Honestly, I just wanted to have some reassurance for my friend. Glad to hear it was nothing. The old man chuckles, scratching the back of his neck as he leans closer and lowers his voice. Well, those kids did come here to stock up on supplies, just like you guys did. And they asked a lot of questions, like you did. And then they vanished. Like you will. Is what I imagined that he'd say next. I look at him, trying to maintain this slightly crooked smile on my face, even though the way he said it makes it hard to do so. His words sounded mildly threatening. Or so they say. But I'm sure that they simply went on their merry way. You don't believe they disappeared? He continues to smile, his fingers tapping on the counter to the beat of the shop's music playing in the background. Who knows? They were a rowdy bunch. Wouldn't surprise me if they went their separate ways. Two of them were arguing the whole time. Lots of yelling, too. Were they being rude to you, sir? Uh-huh. One was. The cougar with reddish fur. He looked like the leader of the group. He was yelling at a female collie, saying that she cheated on him. When I asked him to tone it down, he snapped back. Oh, hmm. Well, lucky we're nothing like those customers. Hee hee hee. Hope it didn't turn violent. Thank God it didn't come to that, but his whole group did get uncomfortable. But then they left the shop and continued arguing outside. What would a group of friends on a camping trip be arguing about so much? That cougar fellow wanted to cancel their trip. Hmm, why was that? Uh, don't tell me that he was scared like Raymond over here. Because they didn't get permission to enter Koamino. That makes me frown. Koamino? Yup, it's an old abandoned town a few miles from here. Sounds interesting. Sure is, but that place is dangerous. The old buildings there could collapse at any moment. What about the other two? You said that there were four of them. You sure do like to ask a lot of questions. Sorry, I'm just curious. You know what they say about curious cats, eh? Okay, this guy's definitely trying to mess with me. But whatever, I'll just let it slide. The other two left soon after. A female rabbit and a young male tiger. So they couldn't get permission to enter and just left? Pretty much. That rabbit told me that they were gonna just gonna cancel the trip and go back to their university. I see. Again, you sure ask a lot of questions. You're not some undercover journalist, eh? Hmm, <laughs> nah. Sorry, I'll stop bothering you about it. Well, you gonna buy anything then? Ah, of course. That's why we came here. So, uh, you got any duct tape? Our tents got torn up because certain someone accidentally clawed it when he was sleeping. Absolutely. Let me check in the back. The old shopkeeper disappears between the shelves before coming back out with the duct tape in his hands. I use the brief opportunity to whisper to Raymond if there's anything else that we should ask before going, but the tiger doesn't have the time to respond. Right, anything else? Raymond averts his gaze, looking down as if to conceal his emotions, yet the veins around his fists pop out as he clenches them tightly. Did... Did the tiger say anything? The bison folds his arms and seems to be thinking to himself. Hmm. 
nothing much really, though he looked very sad the whole time. But he did get one thing before leaving. The shopkeeper grabs a keychain from a shelf filled with souvenir trinkets. You guys can have that one for free. There's loads more collecting dust in the back. I pay for the duct tape, thanking him for the trinket, and we finally step outside. Not bad. Aside from him acting out though, I think it's just old age catching up to him. The thing that stood out was that he immediately pointed out who the group leader was. Interesting enough to think about, but that comes later. We set out on a longer walk. The other witness lives on the outskirts of town. Raymond has been silent for a while. I gave him the keychain from the shop, and he has been staring at it from time to time. I'm sure he has a lot on his mind right now. It must have been hard for him, listening to all that. Hey, um, wanna have a rest at the playground for a bit? My knees are killing me. Can. We each sit on an empty swing. The joyful shouts of the children echo throughout the chilly autumn breeze as they run around playing tag. Raymond takes a deep breath before slowly exhaling as he fiddles with the keychain. Uh, you holding up okay? Yeah. Raymond lifts his head and smiles. You were good at talking just now. Just years of experience in the field of lying, I suppose. Nothing to be proud of, really, but it helps. Very useful skill in your line of work. As a cashier? What? La, I meant... I know, I know. I'm just teasing. After we both chuckle, there is a momentary silence. Hey, um, can I ask you something? Sure. What was your brother like? Mogat? Well... Yeah, I know you struggled to listen to what the old man was saying about your brother. So I thought, maybe you can tell me more about him. I don't really know where to start. Well, I don't know, really. I guess I'm a little curious how he ended up all the way in Poland. Okay, um... Raymond closes his eyes. He got a full scholarship by the Malaysian government after being on the top 50 scores for the National High School Leaving Exam. Damn, bet you were really proud of him. Raymond tugs the end of his coat while biting his cheeks. His expression is oddly pained. Actually, I resented him a bit. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Don't worry, La. As a brother, I am proud, you know. But whenever we... Balik Kampong? On... Hari Raya? Our relatives would only talk about him, and I kept getting compared to him. I mean to say... We were quite close when we were young. Before all that, my parents worked at a Hawker Center in Kuching, serving special Sarawakian laksa. That place was so damn popular. People always come to eat there. So my parents worked till late at night, and since I was the eldest, I had to take care of my little addict. Is that how you pronounce it? Addict. I learned to cook from my father and cooked for my brother when our parents weren't at home. I see. No wonder you're so good at it. Raymond chuckles. A tiny smile curves up from the corner of his mouth. Well, like I said, Mukat was very brilliant, you know, always getting straight A's in exams. And I guess I felt like I wasn't measuring up anymore. So in the end, I chose to move away from my family and flew to Kuala Lumpur to work as a kitchen apprentice. Mugat still tried to keep in touch with me, but I was selfish. 
I simply wanted to distance myself from them. Raymond stops talking to wipe his eyes. Then one day, I got a phone call from my father. I heard my mother sobbing in the background when he said that Ugar had disappeared. And then suddenly, I felt so guilty for leaving. I just had to find him. Remen clears his throat. Oh, sorry. I seem to have started rambling. You didn't ask about any of this. No, no, that's fine. I really hope your brother is alright somewhere. I fall silent, letting the tiger gather himself while I gaze silently at the playground. I know how that feels. Ah, huh. what do you mean? Just that. Something similar happened to me, I guess. Oh, uh, tell me. Well, basically, I also lost someone close to me, and I'm doing my best to find out what happened to them. But it feels like even the people closest to me want to keep secrets about it. Raymond gazes at me, clearly waiting for me to elaborate. I sigh. It's weirdly difficult to talk about it, even after Raymond opened up about why he's here. It's... My mother. She was a detective, you see. She was investigating some disappearances. Kinda like we are right now. Ah. Yeah, she was the best detective ever, before she... Actually, never mind that. We should get going. I get up, quickly, as a tiger shoots me a surprise look. In the end, he follows suit. I feel a little guilty for cutting the conversation off so abruptly. But something inside of me didn't want to say the words that were about to come out of my mouth. I glance at my phone. Is it Marcus? Nah, just my dad. It's not important. Okay. How are your legs? Still painful? Nah, they're good now. Let's go. After about 10 more minutes, we arrive at... Mm, Mitskievicha. Mits, Mitskievet, Mitskievicha? Street. This one might be easy, especially since I'm already acquainted with the witness. I think we'll just deal with him with a straight-up approach. You sure he'll speak? We know each other, so probably. Okay, La. Your call, then. A ginger male tabby in his 20s is wiping the sweat from his brows as he rakes the fallen red leaves into a huge heap. Hey there, Marchin. He stabs the ground with the rake that he's holding and supports his weight on it, barely glancing in our direction. Whatever it is, I'm kinda busy right now, as you can see. Then his eyes meet mine. Oh, Tomic. Haven't seen you in a long while. I was in uni. Oh damn, that's amazing. Where were you studying? Oh, law. Uh, but I went on to become a private detective. I show him M mom's PI license, making sure my finger covers her first name and a bit of her photo. That's awesome, bro. Although you could put a bit more effort into looking like one. Not all detectives wear a trench coat, you know. He begins to laugh before abruptly cutting himself off. Sorry about what happened with your mom, by the way. Uh, thank you. So, what do you want from me? I doubt it's a social call. And who is this? He points at Raymond. Uh, just a friend tagging along. Nice. Almost like those old detective books. He's your sidekick. Not exactly. Anyway, um, I'm here about a case. The case? The four students who went missing after coming here on a camping trip? They visited the gas station that you work at during the time. Oh, yeah. I remember that. That was quite a while ago. Based on the police report, you told them that you saw the group leaving town? Yeah, I was working inside when they were at the station. Can you describe what happened? Mm, I don't know, bro. The day went as usual. Cars came in and droves to get their tanks filled. The traffic from the highway near by was heavy too. That was when the two of them came inside. Which ones? 
Oh, that was a young female rabbit and a male tiger. What about the other two? Oh, yeah. A male cougar and a female collie? They were outside by the car. Can you describe them a bit more for me? Um, just their typical jock type? Brown fur? The collie was pretty, I guess. But not that special in appearance. Uh, what were they up to? And they had been at each other's throats since they arrived at the gas station. The collie accused a cougar of cheating on her and slapped him. Was that what you actually heard from her? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, that rabbit just said that their trip was a disaster, and they were going back home. Did the tiger say anything? He asked for directions back to Warsaw. He seemed like the cheeriest one of the bunch. I see. Thanks for your help. Sure thing. I will leave you to your own devices. Have a good one. I nod as we both step off of his lawn and begin walking on the pavement. So, how do you think that's all went? Well, we've got the statements, though I have a feeling that there are some inconsistencies. Something's amiss. I feel that also. Raymond frowns. Hey, uh, wanna head back to Gerberny Edgefords for some food? We can discuss more about that there. Cat, this walking already made me damn hungry. Weh. Look, there is a bus coming. Sweet, just in time. God, he's cute. David's car is no longer at Gerberny Edgefords. Guess he picked it up sometime yesterday. I look towards the woods with unease. The whole thing was so close to here. And that's where I'm going to end it for today. So, a couple of stuff happened. We finally find out who this um, fox was that uh, Tom was going to end up meeting. Uh, Jacob. And... Obviously, you know what this type of meeting was that Tom had. <laughs> um, but he also, aside from getting money out of it, which was the original intention from way back in the beginning, um he was able to i guess secure some help for Otto. um and then later on tom was assigned the case that may be related to his mom if i recall correctly uh marcus was talking about how this case in particular was the last one for um tom's mom the one that she was investigating before she disappeared which, you know, might have something to do with uh, Raymond's own brother disappearing. Then we met Bernard the Bear, who is the owner of the bar and I think is the uncle of Otto. He's the one that Otto said, like, well, I might have to talk to my uncle or something like that for help. And um, you could see that there is something going on with Marcus and Bernard, whether it's you know, relationship stuff, or if it's just, you know, they used to be very good friends, but now they're not. And, you know, the fact that Bernard's calling Marcus a pup, it's like, hmm, that's some interesting language you're using. But also something else happened while uh, Marcus was there, which is that he found out that the the staff of the Gubernietschwerk was being uh, interrogated by the police. Because, um, well, obviously, if you find food wrappers and a whole bunch of containers related to one restaurant, then you're going to want to ask the, the wait staff, like, hey, have you seen this person? Like, um, he has a whole bunch of wrappers and stuff like that. Like, why is that? Like, that, that's, a, that's an interesting coincidence that they have to investigate. And later on, of course, we had uh, Tom and Raymond doing, like, the whole little investigating with with the witnesses and we found out that Raymond's brother was with three other people who were I guess having a fight well two of them were having a fight so I'm wondering if that has to do with the disappearance or maybe the fight got worse or it involved the other two people the tiger and the Holly I don't remember if it was a Holly I forget what the, um, who the other person was but maybe um, a fight broke out while they were at um, at the place that they were going to go to 
and perhaps somebody got hurt or something. We don't know yet, of course. But yeah, so... Hmm. What are your thoughts? Write it down in the comments, and thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play... Oh yeah, I already forgot how to pronounce this name. <laughs> Yourself, you can do so by going down into the link in the description, which should have a direct link for the Twitter page. Which should have a direct link for the itch.io page. Um, where you can download and play the game, or you can just go to itch.io and search for it yourself. It's C-I-E-N-I-E. -E, which I believe is Polish for Shadow. And... They also have a Patreon in case you want to subscribe and, you know, get early access to builds of this visual novel. Um, but yeah, all the pertinent links down in the description, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.